Product animation is one of the hardest things to learn. It's complex, incredibly difficult, and can feel like a massive waste of time. At least, that's what I would have said a year ago, before I discovered these simple tricks that make the whole process 10 times easier. Because not only are these workflows simple to implement, but they can be used on pretty much anything. So today, we're gonna break down three of the most complex shots from this actual TV ad. We're gonna cover how to recreate them step by step. And by the end of this video, you'll have some amazing shots to slap on your portfolio. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. More on that later. So for context, we're gonna recreate three shots for this product. It's a custom built 65% mechanical keyboard. And since it's a prototype, it doesn't work. Now, the design of this is actually top secret, so I can't give away the exact model for obvious reasons. But I spoke with the creators and they've allowed me to give away a blend file in the description with a dumbed down version so you can follow along. Now, with your blend file open, let's kick off with this heavy hitter. To the average viewer, this looks like some kind of Houdini simulation, but there's no liquid here, no simulations, nothing. Instead, the workflow for this is actually super simple, and the entire animation is done with this. Let me explain. First, add in any of these empty objects. This is going to act like a cookie cutter and slice our geometry depending on where it is in 3D space. But to achieve that effect, there's two steps involved here. Step one is the most important, and that is materials. To transform from a static mesh to a liquid metal, we need to do some material magic. Don't worry, it's super easy. First, we need two principled BSDFs and a mix shader. This first material will act as the invisible part of the mesh, while the second material will be what gets revealed. So on material one, set the alpha to zero and plug that into the top socket of the mix shader. For material two, you should already have this set up in the blend file you downloaded. So just plug that into the second socket. Now, this is where the fun begins. Hello. I just watched back the edit for this next section and oh my god. All right, so first we want to add the noise texture. It's boring. So instead of that, let's try something different and treat this as a recipe, specifically for cookies. Here's the ingredients you're going to need. Two cups of texture coordinates, two teaspoons of noise texture, half a cup of lukewarm vector math, one teaspoon of mix RGB, one cup of map range, one large pinch of maths, and finally, one bump note for added texture. First, lay out your ingredients on the table and make them follow this order. We're going to start by mixing everything from left to right. But before we make our cookie dough, let's create the cookie cutter. Remember this? This is our cookie cutter. So let's add this to the recipe by clicking this object field and selecting our cookie cutter object. Now, straight away, you'll see nothing's happened. That's because we don't have any dough yet. So let's make it. First, mix in the object texture coordinates with the mix RGB and the noise texture. Here are the settings to use on both the noise texture and the mix RGB. But before we move on, let's add in some subtle ripples to our mixture by animating the noise. Simply click the node, hover your mouse on the W, and press I to set a keyframe. Then move your timeline to the final frame, change the W factor to something like five, and again, press I. Moving on, let's add in that half cup of lukewarm vector math and set it to length. Next, let's mix in the full cup of map range here and set the parameters to this. I'll fold this through another noise texture and one large math node set to these parameters. Now, to finish this off, I'll shape the dough with a bump node set up like this and plug that into the second material's normal factor. Finally, it's time to bake. I'll throw these in the oven at 180 degrees Celsius by plugging the math node's result into the mix shader factor. All right, in all seriousness, with that done, we can now move the cookie cutter object and you can see it makes that super cool liquid effect in real time. You might be saying, Smeef, why isn't this working on the whole keyboard? Well, that's because just like you're probably realizing now, 
we have to do this for every object. Yeah, I said this was going to be easy, not fast. <laughs> cue the cue the time lapse. Okay, that took way longer than expected. But that brings us to step two, which is animation. There's two things we need to animate here, the keyboard and the cookie cutter. All we need to do is grab the keyboard controller and move it into position like this. The camera's already set up, and to make things easier, I've enabled order keys. This just means whenever I make a change to something, Blender automatically sets a keyframe on the timeline. So with that in mind, I'll set a keyframe on frame one, move to about frame 110, and set another keyframe with the keyboard rotating to show itself to camera. Now, we wanna do the same thing with the cookie cutter. So to do that, set a key on frame one with the empty above the keyboard. Then on frame 110, pull it down until the entire keyboard is showing. All that's left to do is smooth out those keyframes, since right now, it looks like garbage. So jump into the graph editor, change the pivot point to individual origins, select everything by pressing A, press T to open the interpolation menu and switch this to Bezier and just start scaling. Ideally, you'll want to get this to a smooth S curve. Now, once you're happy with it, all that's left to do is to hit that render button. And in a few minutes, we get this. Now, this is super slick, but it's 2023. And if you want to land clients, then you need to showcase your work, not just store it on your hard drive. Lucky for us, it's super easy with Squarespace. Creating a high quality website is as simple as plug and play with Squarespace's Fluid Engine. It takes all the aspects of building a website and condenses it down into an easy to use workflow. You can pick from hundreds of award-winning templates, drag and drop elements, and even scale your images with their auto image scaling features. But probably the best thing about Squarespace is how simple it is to set up an online store. You can go from unemployed to freelancer in basically no time. If it's product animation you're selling, even consulting, you can easily set up a booking system and start getting paid. This is one of the best website builders out there that I've used. And I mean, look at this. This is my website. It has everything I need. Took under an hour to set up and launch. It's amazing. So if you want to try this out yourself, start your website with a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head over to squarespace.com forward slash smeef to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now it's time to create this super smooth shot. It looks difficult, but honestly, there's not much to it. And we can achieve this in two steps. Step one is modifiers. To go from this to this, we need to deform the object. So with the rubber foot selected, open the modifiers tab and select the simple deform. Let's switch this from twist to bend. And if you start playing with this angle, you'll see it's not working. So just cycle through the axes until you get to one that works. For me, it was the Z axis, but it's still not bending right. To get it curled up like this, we need to change the origin point. And the quickest way to do that is by adding in a cube at the end of the foot. I'll parent this to the object so it follows along with our animation. And finally, let's link this up with the modifier by clicking this origin box and selecting the cube. There's still two major issues though. The foot isn't bending the right way and this cube is showing in the render. To fix the bending, you can select the cube and rotate it by negative 90 degrees on the X axis. And to remove it from the renders, just click these two icons here. Now we can move on to step two, which is animation. There's really not much to this part of the process other than animating the bend angle and moving the foot down. So on frame one, set the angle to about negative 250 degrees. And on frame 38, set it to zero. Now to really sell that natural feel to the animation, we need to add in a few small breakdown keys. On frame one, I'll move the foot up to about here. Then on frame 10, I'll pull it back down into its housing. It still feels rigid though, and needs a tiny bit of rotation. So back on frame one, I'll rotate the foot backwards on the Y axis so that it feels like it's rolling into position. And with that, the animation's done. We just need to smooth it out since right now it's looking like a PowerPoint transition. 
So in the timeline, let's switch to the graph editor by pressing control tab. And just like before, change the pivot point to individual centers, set the interpolation to Bezier and start scaling. Once you're happy with that, hit that render button. And in a few minutes, you should have yourself this. Now, that was a pretty basic shot to pull off, and the end result is amazing. But there's still one more workflow that uses a new technique I think you're gonna love. <laughs> this last shot is probably the hardest to create in terms of effort. What you're seeing is not a liquid simulation, but actually a particle simulation. And it's done by using probably the most underrated feature in Blender. Balls specifically metaballs. These things are super tactile and allow you to create some really interesting objects and effects, but I wanna use this to create what I'm calling liquid light. Basically just the dollar store of a liquid simulation. So to do that, I need a constant flow of these balls and this can be achieved with a particle system. Let's add in a torus object and rotate it like this. Now in the particle properties tab, I'll click this plus icon and start setting up a very simple system. I wanna have 5,000 particles, have them spawn in before the animation starts, and I want each particle to have an average lifespan of at least 200 frames. Now, we want this to be spawning the metaballs, not whatever this is. So to fix that, come through to this render menu and change the render from halo to object. Make sure to disable show emitter and click this little eyedropper to select your ball. The final step is to fix the scale since right now it's tiny. And you can do this by playing with this scale slider here until you get something you're happy with. So we have the base of our liquid light here, but we need to somehow guide this to a specific location, not just fall into oblivion. And this is where curves come in. We can add in any one of these curves, but there's actually a bunch of really cool designs that for some reason are disabled by default. So to get all of these, come into Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and search for Extra Objects. Hit this checkbox, and now we have all of these incredible designs to choose from. The specific curve we want, though, is found under Knots and is called SpiroFit. This basically wraps our torus in a curve and it works perfectly for what we're about to do. So with this curve selected, I wanna scale this out on the Y axis and place the tip of this on the torus. We're gonna to use this like a straw to suck, suck in, in these balls. balls. <laughs> I'm sorry. And the only way to do that is with physics. With the curve selected, click this icon under the wrench and select the force field option. That's gonna spawn in this sonar detector but what we want to focus on are just a few of these settings here. First, let's change the shape to be a curve. For the strength, set that to be about negative 100. For the flow, set this to 10. And lastly, underneath the fall off, change the power from zero to one. Now when we hit play, you should have a super cool liquid spiral. But there's no texture and the liquid looks like a PS2 cutscene. Oh, Ari, it's me, Hagrid. That's because the Metaball has a special menu here, and we need to update the resolution. The smaller you make this number, the more detailed the Metaball gets. So I set my viewport to 0.2, the render resolution to 0.05, and for the influence, change this to 1.5. Now to get that liquid chrome texture, just copy the metal material from the keyboard and now all that's left to do is the animation itself. And honestly, this is the simplest part. We wanna slide the keyboard through the spiral and into the camera. So let's set up our camera to be looking through the spiral and place our keyboard on an angle like this at frame one. Now we can move to about frame 80 and push it all the way until it hits your camera's sensor. I'll also rotate it slightly to get some dynamic movement, but really, that's it. The final step is to smooth out the curves, and once you're happy with it, hit that render button, and in a few minutes, we get this. Now, these techniques are amazing for visualizing and showcasing products, but honestly, this is just scratching the surface of what's possible with product animation. To get shots like this, you need to understand some very basic but powerful tricks in Blender. 
And to find out how to do that, you'll want to watch this video right here.